Hello and welcome to Cooking the Books with Heather. Today we are going to be making Benedicta's Steak and Mushroom Pie from Teresa Carl Sanders' Outlander Kitchen 2 because my family and I just got back from a trip to the UK where we visited uh, both London and Scotland, uh, a couple of different places in Scotland, and my son has decided that his new favorite thing is steak pie, which is not really um, surprising considering chicken pot pie or turkey pot pie are, you know, that those are one of his favorite things to eat here. And we just don't usually have a beef based pie here, but uh, hopefully you guys will see a video of like everything we ate while we were there. And you will see that he chose a steak pie almost any time it was available. So we're hoping that he likes this one. Um, to start with, I have pretty much all of my ingredients here. A few back there. Oh, one of them back there. The other one is just measured out. Uh, my mushrooms don't look great, but I did just buy them at the grocery store yesterday and I think they'll be fine. I bought them pre-sliced uh, because they were super cheap that way compared to the whole ones. I generally prefer to slice my own though because they're usually kind of thickly sliced. I think that'll work in this though. Um, but in here I have cut my sirloin. She said to use beef sirloin or top round cut into one inch cubes. So I've cubed those up. Um, it's a pretty lean cut, but I think mine was called a top sirloin. I don't know. I always have a hard time finding the same named cut sometimes when it, it's all kind of confusing different areas of the country call different cuts, different things. And I don't know all of them. So anyway, um, we're going to start by seasoning these. So I'm going to put in yeah, kosher salt, uh, fresh pepper. I'm not going to measure this. I got this new, um, better version of the, the grinder that I had before. And I love it. it it's really great. It's kind of expensive, but I love it a lot. So I'm just gonna eyeball the amount of pepper. This does a more consistent grind than my other one did. Grinds faster. And also it has like four different levels that are really easy to choose from like coarse coarseness levels. Love it. Um, and now we're going to use some mustard powder. I've got Coleman's here. You can use whatever you like. Um, I know that Oops. It's a, that's great. Uh, in Great Britain, Coleman's is sort of a, a, one of the like standards. So there we go. There we go. Whatever you have on hand, I'm sure would be absolutely fine. Now I have to actually switch to where the recipe starts. Um, I'm just going to toss these up just to get it all coated with the seasonings. So before we move to the stove to start browning this and cooking. I'm going to talk a little bit about the other ingredients. I have some bacon just chopped up raw. I have um, uh, onion that I've diced, just quite a bit of onion, not too small. Doesn't matter. It's going to cook a while. Um, so we've got some beer. She says to use, what does she say to use? There it is. A dark low hops beer, such as chocolate porter or stout. I'm uh, using this local 4042 chocolate stout. It's kind of sweet, not very bitter. I didn't want something that would get really bitter, especially as we're cooking it and potentially concentrating the flavors. Um, I have some thyme, fresh thyme that I just picked off. Again, I did not measure that, but it seems about right. It's going to be so 
it's enough that I picked it off the stems because if it weren't for the recipe telling me to, I would just throw it all in there and pull the stems out later and that works fine. In here I also have one bay leaf. I think they go in at the same time. Um, I have some minced garlic. You can grate it instead if you'd like. I'm going to take the help of some boxed beef stock. You could use her quick vegetable stock, which we have not made here before, but we've made other stocks, uh, beef stocks that I can link up here. Um, there's also, she calls for either mushroom ketchup, which is something in this book, a recipe in this book, which I have not made yet, or Worcestershire sauce. I'm gonna use the Worcestershire sauce. Um, and then later we're gonna need some puff pastry. We're gonna need some flour, we're gonna need some puff pastry, we're gonna need an egg. We'll deal with all of that later. We're also gonna need a little bit of vegetable oil just to cook this in and to, to make our roux and all that stuff. But I think that's most of our ingredients. So let's get cooking. So uh, she just says in a large pan over medium heat, I think I'm gonna go with this. I think this will fit everything. I'm hoping, we'll see. It's definitely enough to brown this and the beef and the mushrooms certainly cook down a lot. So had this heating for a little bit on medium heat. I'm gonna add the bacon. So the first thing we're gonna do is crisp that up. We don't want to over crisp it though. And then once it's crispy, we're gonna move it to, I have a plate lined with paper towels just to absorb that. Any bits of fat. So while my bacon is browning, I'm gonna measure my Worcestershire sauce into the beer because they go in at the same time and there's room. So might as well just go ahead and measure it out. My husband didn't believe there was a tablespoon left in there, but there was. I'm gonna call this good enough because I just don't wanna burn it. We're gonna try to take out the bacon while we leave the bacon drippings. Now, uh, there's a piece in there, get out. She says to increase the heat to medium high. I'm not gonna do that just now, but also to make sure that there are two tablespoons of oil in there, it's starting to smoke. I just wanna get some meat in here to cool it off. Um, we're gonna brown this meat in batches. And then we're gonna take this out when it's brown, do some more, uh, and make sure that there's always enough oil in there. Um, this is just grapeseed oil, any sort of vegetable oil that you prefer, or you could add more uh, bacon grease. If that's your jam, And she says to do it at medium high heat. I just didn't want to go ahead and get all burned on the bottom of my pan. So if I feel like I need to turn the heat up, I will. But for right now, kind of going to keep it at medium, maybe turn it up a little bit. We're really just trying to brown this. But like I said, I did not want to completely burn my pan immediately. When it's browned on all the sides, I'm just gonna take it out and put it on a plate. Turn it up a little bit. All right, I'm gonna call this batch pretty much done. And this is my last batch. Got enough color here, especially on the pan. So I'm gonna turn my heat down briefly, just so this stuff doesn't all burn on the bottom. Got a lot of lovely brown on the bottom, but I just don't want it to burn. Okay, so there we go. We wanna make sure we have a 
couple tablespoons of oil in there. I think we have enough I've been adding as I go. And to this we're going to add our onions. And I'm going to turn the heat back up now that it's got something in there to, to take it. Oh no. There we go. And we're going to add our mushrooms. Looks like a lot of mushrooms now. They will cook down a lot. So this should cook five to seven minutes at medium high, she says. I am going to turn it up just because I want these to cook pretty quickly and release their uh, liquid because that will help get the brown off the bottom and stop it from turning so black. I think my pan needs a little attention after this probably. I'm going to call this good for my onions and mushrooms. Now we're going to add the garlic and we're only going to cook it for like 30 seconds. We just want it to be fragrant. We don't want it to burn. Get it mixed up in there. And now we're going to add some all-purpose flour. This is basically making a roux. And at this point, if I feel like I need a little more vegetable oil or whatever fat I've been cooking in. This is when I would add it to make sure my gravy does not turn out lumpy. I think I need just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more. You want all of that flour to get absorbed by the fat and juices and everything in the pan. We're going to cook this. I'm going to turn it down to about medium. We're going to cook it for a couple minutes just to get the raw flour taste out. And what I don't want to do is see all of that stuff on the bottom go black. Now we're going to deglaze the pan with our beer and mushroom ketchup or uh, Worcestershire sauce whatever you're using for that. And we're going to want to try to get everything stirred in off the bottom, dissolved, stir, scrape. Not getting quite everything and this is starting to thicken up really quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and add the stock. It's getting a little better. I can feel that I've got almost everything off the bottom now, but I do need to add a little more stock. So now we're going to add in the bacon. And the beef that we browned including all of its juices. Now we also add the thyme and bay leaf. Give it a stir, get it all incorporated. And now we're going to bring it to a boil, partially cover it, and reduce it to a simmer. And we're gonna have to simmer it for like an hour. So at that point, we're gonna be looking for the beef to be tender, done of course um, and the gravy should be shiny and thick so about an hour so after this comes to a boil I'll show you how I partially cover it I'm gonna call that a boil so I'm going to just put my this is the right lid this is the right lid my pan lid on kind of like that so it's not going to completely boil off 
however works for your lid. My Dutch oven might have been a better option here, but um, so I'm going to turn it down and I'm going to make sure it simmers like it keeps bubbling a little bit. Doesn't I don't want it a full rolling boil, but we do want it to bubble a little bit under there. We'll let this simmer for about an hour. So I'm going to turn a timer on for an hour and we'll come back and show you what to, to do with this stuff once this part is done. This has been cooking for about an hour. I don't think that my meat is tender. Um, seems really, uh, I mean like it's starting to get there like I can kind of push that into the edge a little bit. I'm gonna let it go a little while longer but now is a good time to sort of taste for seasoning. Also, I, I would like for my um, gravy to be a little bit thicker. So I'm going to taste it. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. And some more pepper. give it a stir and then I'm just gonna let it go um, since I want it to thicken up some more I'm gonna let it simmer with the lid completely off so I'm probably gonna have to turn the heat up a little bit just to keep it simmering so while this is finishing up I think it might take another 15 minutes to maybe half an hour um, I'm going to heat up my oven to 400 degrees so that'll be ready for us i'm going to get out a pan and i'm going to cover this in parchment this is mostly in case it boils over and we need six eight ounce ramekins these are i think eight but might be ten It'll be fine. So we'll have these. We're going to put this in here. So I'm going to put this to the side and we're going to have to move you guys over there um, so we can deal with the puff pastry. Oh, there's another thing I can do over here. So in here, I've just got one egg and about a teaspoon of water and I'm just going to mix it up and we're going to use that on top of our pastry to make it very nice and brown. All right, so please excuse the potentially awful overhead because, yeah, I'm all by myself. He's coming in now. Now he's coming in. Here I have a sheet of puff pastry that I just got out of the freezer. I've made it before, I think from one of her, from her first book. I'll link that up there, but this is just frozen stuff. Anyway, so I am supposed to roll this out to an eighth of an inch thick. And hopefully it is not too old from having been in the freezer for too long. That is just going to have to do, and what I plan to do is just cut it into basically squares with a very sharp knife. Kind of rectangles. Alright, so those should go on top of my ramekins. So now I took the bay leaf out of my pie mixture and I'm going to evenly distribute it amongst these ramekins. Just doing a little check. We're going to lay these over the tops, press them on, a 
looks like we generously covered in one direction, but not necessarily the other. We live. We're only feeding family tonight. Probably could have fit most of the gravy in here, but I just didn't want it to be absolutely positively overflowing. So let me clean this off a little bit. This isn't going to stick well to the ramekins, but you can see I did drip while I was doing this. I'm going to give these an egg wash so they get nice and brown. You can put a little bit of egg wash on the edge of the ramekins if you want to help it stick, but honestly it's going to come off anyway. The last step step before we put them into our 400 degree oven is to poke a hole which has a small hole but it is what it is we get what we get now we're going to put them in the oven for 30 to 35 minutes she says in the upper third i'm using my small oven so it just it's the bottom of my small oven um, until they are golden brown. Everything in the center should be pretty much cooked. Uh, so we're just cooking the pastry on top. So we will be back and show you what they look like in about 30 minutes. I'm glad I took a look at these a little early because they're looking very, very brown. So I took them out at about 25 minutes. Also really glad she suggested you put the parchment paper on the bottom because they did overflow quite a bit. Um, but they look all done. They smell good. And uh, we're going to let these cool for about 10 minutes before we eat. Um, we do have extra gravy. I can heat up a little bit and put in here if we lost too much. But uh, yeah, all done. We're ready to eat. On this episode of Cooking the Books with Heather, you watched me make Benedicta's Steak and Mushroom Pie from the second Outlander Kitchen Cookbook by Teresa Carl Sanders. So, my family, I think I said this already, but we'll say it again. My family recently went to the UK and my son found out his favorite thing, or found a new favorite thing to eat, and that was steak pie. So he liked it both in a sort of pasty form which he ate for breakfast at least twice in Edinburgh and uh, in this sort of pie form. Liked it both ways. So we decided we would make this, make it when we found it in this book for the channel. And I actually ended up liking this recipe more than I thought I would when it was sort of cooking. I was not sure that the beef would be tender whether that was you know, what I chose or you know, the recipe, hard to say. Uh, I did choose a, I think it was a sirloin roast of some sort, um, but I was pleasantly surprised that when it came out of the oven, the beef was tender enough. It wasn't super tough. Uh, I was a little surprised. I did cook it a little bit longer so after the time that you're supposed to cook it, I think she says about an hour, I cooked it a little bit longer while I prepared the pastry, which you're supposed to sort of let it cool at that point, but it was fine. Um, and it turned out plenty tender. The beer had a little bit of bitterness in the sauce, um, which I, taste bitter a little bit better than the rest of my family. We did a little cool experiment with little papers anyway. And so I could taste it. The rest of my family could not. But it was not off-puttingly bitter for me. So you kind of have to be careful about what beer you choose. I did choose the one that was sort of a sweeter, I think it was a chocolate stout. Um, where she suggests either a porter or a stout. You definitely don't want anything with a lot of bitterness in it because there's quite a bit of beer in the recipe and, you know, that will concentrate down into your sauce. But 
I'm sure that I will be required to make this again <laughs> because my son did enjoy it. The whole family liked it. Uh, next time I might just do it all in like a 9 by 13 pan with a single sheet of puff pastry on top, which is an option in the book. Uh, and if I happen to make the mushroom ketchup, 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 whatever, uh, that is in the book, I will have to try that as well. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know about that recipe, but there's also a quick vegetable stock in here, which I haven't made, but I do often make my own beef stock. I just didn't use that this time. I have made it before on the channel, so I'm sure there will be links to some of those here. Uh, but anyway, if you like a pot pie, if you like a, a tender beef stew type of thing, this is a great option. And uh, I hope if you try it, you'll let me know in the comments down below what you think. So if you've enjoyed watching me make this, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, share this video with your friends, and come back and watch me make something else next week.